Well, the Institute of Public Affairs has found young Australians would rather flee Australia than stay and fight because they're ashamed of our country. Participants who were also asked about whether the government should do more to teach school children to be proud of Australia's history. SU Senior Research Fellow Kevin Donnelly is a critic of the National Curriculum and he joins us live now. Kevin, were you surprised by these results? No, I wasn't, Ash. And uh, as you probably know, I co-chaired the review of the National Curriculum in 2014. And it was obvious when we read the document, especially history, that it's what called what Geoffrey Blaney calls a black armband view of the nation. Certainly the history is very bleak. Uh, you only have to look at the First Fleet. It's described as an invasion leading to genocide. Young people for years now have been taught this very negative view that there's nothing to be proud of, nothing to celebrate. And the other problem, when I looked at the civics curriculum, instead of actually saying you should be proud of being an Australian citizen, it said that you could have multiple citizenship. You could belong to whatever country, whatever nation you believe, and you don't have to identify as being uniquely Australian. It was this very subjective view, very relative view. So when the curriculum was examined in 2014, and it's only got worse, the latest iteration, iteration that came out uh, last year, as Alan Tudge, who was then Education Minister, said, the latest version is even worse in terms of undermining and giving a very cynical view of what we are as a nation and what we should celebrate and acknowledge. The survey is really interesting. The question was, if Australia was in the same position as Ukraine is now, would you stay and fight or leave the country? 46% overall of Australians said they'd stay and fight. 28% said they'd leave the country. 26% unsure. But when you break that down and look at that age group of 18 to 24-year-olds who would presumably be the ones you know, sent to, to fight in that scenario, it, it drops again and it's just 32% of that age group saying they'd stay and fight. 40% saying they'd leave the country. 28% saying they're unsure. How confident are you that that really is linked to what they're being taught at school and not just uh, a, a modern mindset of, of perhaps fighting for a country being a, a foreign, a foreign and, and unusual concept to, to our youth? When you look at what's happened in education over the last 30, 40 years, I'd argue it really does begin, even in primary school, I'm not saying we should be jingoistic or xenophobic, but uh, many older viewers will remember uh, in schools around Australia back in the day, we used to salute the flag on a Monday morning. We would have the oath of allegiance. There was a strong sense in the way history was taught, even uh, the way literature was taught, to celebrate what it was to be Australian. And a lot of uh, our parents, older Australians, their parents, who went through the Second World War, uh, for example, uh, even earlier on the Depression, they understood what you needed to do to defend a country. And we see that in the Ukraine at the moment, where so many hundreds of thousands of people are taking arms against a very oppressive totalitarian regime. The reality is in Australia, we like to believe we're prosperous, we're safe, but you only have to look at Xi Jinping in China, what's happening in terms of uh, Chinese hegemony. They really want to take control of the Asia Pacific. And if you add Russia, if you add what's happening overseas, really it is time to actually, in the curriculum, talk about nation building and about having a sense of ownership and pride in what we are as a nation. After all, that's why so many millions of people have come to live here, especially after the Second World War. Well, Kevin, I think you're right. It certainly is a, a, an inspiration to watch how the Ukrainian people have responded to the threats they are facing at the moment. And we look forward to hearing more from President Zelensky in the Parliament when he addresses both changes a bit later on this afternoon. Appreciate you taking the time to speak with us, Kevin. Thank you. My pleasure, Ash.